So uh, how long did it take for the three of you when you got on set with Arnold to, to literally start peppering him with questions about his career? Five <laughs> seconds? <Yeah>. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah. It's like, I, we don't even care to shake your hand. Sir, so how did you do it? How do I become a success <laughs> story like you? You know, and, and but the cool thing is, you sometimes you get nervous to ask people questions and it's like you want to be his peer and not just a fan. But the thing about Arnold is everybody's his peer. He treats everybody equally and loves to pour into you. And he's like a the grandfather you always wish you had, who's full of stories. You ask him one question, be prepared to sit there for at least 15 minutes to hear a story about something. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, right. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Fifteen yeah. minutes well spent. Well, I mm -hmm. was fascinated because we we sat in the hallway right after our first scene, and you know he knew I did stand up, so he started telling me all these stories about Milton Berle and all of the roasts that he would go to, and just I mean these really iconic moments from you know that Hollywood history. You're just captivated by it. Oh, completely. I've been asking this of everyone. Uh, do you have a favorite Arnold movie? Last Action Hero has always been mine. That was one that really stood out to me. And when I first met Arnold, I had to get that out of the way, right out of the gate. I had to say, hey, I just have to praise you for a second. And I told him all my favorite movies and all the ways he's impacted my life. And then I was like, okay, now we can like get to know each other. But I would say Last Action Hero was is my favorite. I mean, I'm kindergarten cop because, you know, comedy is my thing. And uh, I, I, that, that movie comes on now and I will stop and watch it. And I would have to say Jingle All the Way, because every Christmas I definitely watch that movie and it is a blast. Jingle All the Way I've not heard before. I'm just going to give you props. <laughs> you know. um, so jumping into FUBAR. Uh, so the series is eight episodes. I've seen the first four. Which is your favorite episode and why? Hands down, episode seven is my favorite episode because <laughs> that is when Barry you know, opens up his romantic life to the world. And it doesn't go well for him, but at least he tries. Uh, I think mine are the last two because uh, I got to have an emotional arc and learn. you learn a lot more about my background. Uh, I also get to act uh, kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> is that seven? It's seven, yeah. I get to act ridiculous. I won't tell you why. And I mess up some things as a result. Uh, so I not only got to do uh, a lot of the crazy comedy in that, but then I got to, to shift it into this emotional arc and, um, and have a little bit more serious moments. I would say episode three was probably my favorite because I got to... I, I really got to start showing the underbelly of my character, but I got to do a lot of like Han Solo moments mm -hmm. and have some really, really, really fun action scenes. And uh, it kind of, my, my character kind of comes onto the scene in that episode. He called himself Han Solo. Gotta <laughs> love that. I love it. I know we're both like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Straight from Nick Santora. <laughs> I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of shows and movies. So for soon to be fans of the show, uh, what do you think they would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the show? Hmm. Uh, that there was no real train. The train. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the, I mean, the plane's not real. Like they made all that stuff, but like What's... very impressive. I mean, it was impressive what they made. Yeah, our set architect or designer, not sure what you call him. That man is par none. Like it is, it is ridiculous the things he was able to create from the train, the plane, uh, from even like the silos that uh, we get trapped in. I have to mm -hmm. climb through. Uh, I have a scene where I have to go through a tunnel, and then he built a jail. How do you build a Turkish and prison? He built, from and nothing? he built a tunnel, right? Right. And that bunker. I mean, so, everything was really well done. Maybe and, a surprise would be that they would know that we filmed episode six last. Oh, that that like, is. I wonder if you'd be able to tell that 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 was filmed out of order. That was the last one. Mm -hmm. Yep. You probably can't tell, but that's. Oh, I, I've also spoken to people who film like the the redo the first episode at the end of the shoot because they had to do some reshoots. It's crazy how Hollywood works. Um, uh, what's a scene? that you thought would be, what's a scene you got on the first day, on the first take, or what's a scene that you thought would be super easy uh, and ended up taking like forever? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I'll go first in this one. So as you know, uh, Mary Fitness is like, you know, we're in the CIA, we gotta have our little secret lair. Mary Fitness is the cover that we have. And day one of shooting there, the way that it opens, 
our lair, we had a lot of technical difficulties. So even though there was only a few lines, it felt like it took forever <laughs> to shoot that because we couldn't time the doors perfectly. Mine was uh, saying Boro's last name. I was trying to rhyme it with, uh, was it? Bologna. Bologna and Polonia. Bologna. And I, you know, it was like, oh, it's a simple rhyme. It took me like 30 minutes to get it right. And they kept stopping. Like, That's not right. But it, it And then she mean, finally got it right. And then she messed it up herself. Didn't, didn't she gets it right it. and says, oh, we can use that take. Like, no, that was the take. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tongue twister. That and I had to write equations on the board, uh, but I couldn't write on the board. So I had to, ma they, they made the equation appear as I wrote and I had to match it as I was saying lines. And uh, that took a lot more timing than I would have ever guessed. I would say for me, my character is a linguist and I, I had to speak uh, Kazakh. And I would say that episode two, having to come in, the stakes are really high, the, the pace is so fast, and to have to get that dialect down, there was definitely some, you know, some stop and starts during, during that. Uh, it's gonna be my last question. And uh, Travis, it's an individual one for you, if you don't mind. Um, I'm a big fan of Doug Lyman, and I believe you are part of uh, uh, Roadhouse. Um, I'm just always waiting for a reaction. I'm like, did I get this wrong? 100%, oh, like, let's go. What was it like being part of that uh, film and what can you tease? Uh, like, how does it compare to the original? Uh, first of all, it's Doug Lyman, So, you know, it's going to be great. You know, this man just knows yeah. how to make a film. Uh, it's Jake Gyllenhaal getting to work with him. You know, talk about working with Schwarzenegger. That was a dream. Getting to work with Jake. That, that's another moment for me. That's that's just a highlight of, of my life so far in my profession. Um, also, I got to meet Conor McGregor, which was just another, like, I just... To be uh, in a film, there, I don't know how, it's not going to be the exact same as The Last Roadhouse. I, I think it'll be an addition to it. Um, but I, I think you guys are going to like it. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty tight film. On that note, I'm just going to say, I hope this show is a huge hit for you guys. And I wish you nothing but the best. Aww, right. Thanks, thank brother. You. Appreciate, Appreciate you. it.